Peace, peace. This your host, Selah Shalom. And this is the Cosmon teachings in the words of Jehovah and his angel ambassadors from the Cosmon Bible Owaspi. Now, this is part six of Decoding the Bible with the Waspi. And this documentary is called Decoding the Story of Abraham with the Waspi. Now, in the Waspi, it contains the story of Abraham and it's things in the Waspi's version that can clear up things in the King James Version. So here in this video, you will see how both books can be used for a great tool of clarification. Although I know a lot of Bible believers believe that no book can contend with the Bible. But I will tell you, Awaspi is the book that can rival the Bible. Now, the place where Abraham was said to be born, there is evidence of civilization, being the Akkadians, Assyrians, and Babylonians. And the evidence is there for you to see. So although we cannot trace evidence of Abraham single-handedly, but what we can trace is the civilization he came from. And there are a lot of similarities of clothing and customs in those regions that parallel the Hebrew customs, such as the long beards and lofty hair, hair dreaded in locks, the fringes on the borders of the garments. So there is evidence of Abrahamic Hebraic customs in these regions, as you see on these icons. Now in the Bible, it doesn't give you a physical description of Abraham. It doesn't say if Abraham was black or white. But when we look at the relics coming from those regions where Abraham is born, we see brown to dark skinned people on the relics. Now in the Wasp, it gives you a physical description of Abraham as stated in the first book of God, chapter eight, verse seven, where it states, Abraham was of pure blood and Ahuin, and the light of Suiz, which is the ability to hear angels, had been with his forefathers and foremothers since the flood. And he was large and red like new copper and had black hair and a long beard, fierce to look upon, but his soul was gentle as a woman. So here you can see how Owaspi describes Abraham as being copper skin tone with the lofty beard as seen on these icons from the Mesopotamian region, showing you the same identity and these regions being the Tigris and Euphrates, you can see how the men wear their beards long and knotted compared to the Africans on the Nile Valley who kept their hair short and less facial hair most of the time, showing you the difference between these two cultures of dark-skinned people. So there is no confusion here concerning the color of Abraham and Owaspi. Now we're gonna decode Sodom and Gomorrah. In the Bible, Genesis chapter 19, verse one, 12, 13, and 24, it states, verse one, and there came two angels to Sodom at Eve, and Lot sat in the gate of Sodom, and Lot seeing them, rose up to meet them, and he bowed himself with his face toward the ground. Verse 12, and the men said unto Lot, haste thou hair, has thou hair any besides? Son-in-law, thy sons and thy daughters, whatsoever thou has in the city, bring them out of this place. Verse 13, for we will destroy this place because the cry of them is waxing great before the face of the Lord, and the Lord hath sent us to destroy it. Verse 24, then the Lord rained upon Sodom and Gomorrah brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. Now in the Waspi it states, the first book of God, chapter nine, verse five through nine, it states, God said to Abraham, behold, it is an easy matter to commune with spirits, but to judge righteously of them is not so easy. For which reason, thou and thy wife and 100 picked men shall go and visit Sodom and Gomorrah in the valley of Sedim, or Sodom. Verse six, and Abraham and his people went as commanded by God and visited the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. And God spoke privately to Abraham saying, I will destroy these cities for they are as hells for evil spirits but Lot shall escape for thy sake. So here God, son of Jehovah states, he's gonna destroy Sodom and Gomorrah because of the evil spirits, which are nothing more than evil people when they die. And they continue that practice in spirit. Verse seven, and when they came to Sodom, behold, angels walked amongst the people and the people knew they were angels, but cared not for them. And there were laws made by Bira, or Bira, king of Sodom, regarding the behavior between angels and men. Verse eight, and Abraham being pressed by the presence of God said unto his people, behold, there are angels that love to dwell in lust and to partake with mortals, 
to eat with them, to lie down with them, and to partake in all ungodly pleasures. Verse 9. God through his angels rained down fire and brimstone on Sodom and Gomorrah, and they were burnt and destroyed. Lot the elder escaped and went and lived in a cave. So here is the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah, and there has been evidence found concerning Sodom and Gomorrah near the Jordan, near the area of the Salt Sea, as seen on these pics. Now, now we're going to decode the sacrifice of Isaac, where in the Bible it has you believing that God called for the sacrifice of Isaac, but in the Wasp it states that it wasn't God who gave that order, but one of the evil angels from Sodom and Gomorrah, as described in the Waspies first book of God, chapter 9, verse 10 through 20, it states, verse 10, now after Abraham and his people were returned to Jireh, his camp, and it was night, God said to Abraham, be thou steadfast and show thy people that they may understand my words. Verse 11. And whilst they were yet praying before the altar, God withdrew from Abraham and suffered the evil angels who had followed them from Sodom and Gomorrah to draw near about the altar. And one of the angels clothed himself in a great light and with the crown, and with sparkling gems, and he appeared, so all the multitude of people could look upon him. Verse 12, Abraham said, Who are thou? And the Spirit said, I am thy God, ruler of heaven and earth. Abraham said, I am thy servant. What wouldst thou? And the Spirit said, Thou shalt take thy only son Isaac, and thy host, who were with thee at Sodom and Gomorrah, and go with me weather and I will lead thee for I have a great work for thee verse 13 Abraham said whatsoever thou put this upon me to do that will I do so here you can see how Owaspi clears up the fact that God wasn't responsible for the command of sacrificing Isaac but the evil angel who styled and decorated himself appearing to be a holy angel of light was the one who was behind this deception and according to the Bible it was God who made the commandment. So the Bible is not clarifying these things, but Owaspi is. That's why it's a good tool. Verse 14. So in the morning, Abraham and his son Isaac and the host who had been with Abraham to Sodom and Gomorrah assembled together. And Abraham spoke saying, Whether, O God. Verse 15. The spirit answered saying, Take sticks and a firebrand and come though to the summit of yonder hill. For those shall restore the rites of burnt offerings so Abraham told what God had said, and they started. And Isaac carried the bundle of willows, such as basket makers use, saying, This will light the large pieces, but what will thou burn for an offering, O father? And Abraham said, God will provide. Verse 16. And when they ascended to the place, Abraham gathered logs and heaped them, and heaped them up, and Isaac placed the willows. Verse 17. Then spoke the spirit, saying, What shall a man love above all things in the world? And Abraham said, God. And the spirit said, For which reason thou shalt offer thy only son Isaac as a burnt offering? And it shall be a testimony before the people that thou wilt obey God even to the sacrifice of thy own flesh and kin. You see that? Now this is what your Bible says. So it was the evil angel got you believing in the Bible that this was God or telling Abraham to do such a horrendous act. Verse 18, Abraham said, Show me that thou art God, that I may not err, for I have been commanded not to kill. Verse 19, And the spirit departed away from Abraham, perceiving that he knew the higher law. And Isaac was grieved at heart, for he desired to witness what a sacrifice was. And the people seeing a ram near at hand, went and caught it, and slaughtered it, and sprinkled the blood on the sacrifice. And they light the fire, and they lighted the fire, and roasted the flesh, and took it and gave it to the poor. Verse 20. And Abraham called the place Yahweh Yari, or Jehovah Jari. And they returned to the camp, and Abraham, being moved of God, spoke before the people. So here is the clearing up of the idea of Abraham sacrificing Isaac through Oaspi, that it was not God who commanded Abraham to sacrifice his son Isaac. It was an evil angel, a fallen angel. A lot of you are under the, under the disguise of these fallen angels. A lot of you Hebrews are under the disguise of these fallen angels. And I'm the one who could challenge you on these things. Now, decoding Ammon and Moab, or the Ammonites and Moabites, as far as them being a nation. 
Now, in Owaspi, first book of God, chapter 11, verse 1 and 2, it states, When Lot the younger escaped out of Sodom, he halted in a small city called Benah, and tarried there while Sodom and Gomorrah were being consumed with fire. And because he was saved, he called the place Zor, because he was a worshiper of the doctrines of Zarathustra, who was called in the Phoenician language Zoroastria. And the place was called Zor for more than a thousand years. So here the term Zor referred to the Zarathustrian doctrine. And Lot was a follower of the Zarathustrian doctrine. And remember that Abraham's household migrated out of Persia, where the Zarathustrian doctrine originated. Verse 2, when Lot departed out of Zor, there went with him two tribes, and there were born of the house of Lot offsprings to the two tribes who accompanied him. And these became the nations in after years known as Moabites and Ammonites, who were of the Phoenicians, as their names show, and they followed the doctrines of Zarathustra. So Herod states that two tribes accompanied Lot when he fled Sodom and Gomorrah. And these two tribes later become known as the Moabites and Ammonites. Now according to the Bible, Lot slept with his daughters, having offspring being Moab and Ammon. And that's how those nations came about, according to the Bible. But here in Arwaspi it says these were two tribes, showing you diversity here. Now, as we move on, decoding that Ishmael is not Abraham's physical son but his stepson in the first book of god chapter 11 verse 5 and verses 10 through 12 it states verse 5 now it came to pass that hagar sarah's maid had a son and called his name ishmael and sarah was jealous of hagar and abused her during pregnancy and the lord spoke to abraham saying because of the hatred between thy woman hagar's son will be as a wild man his hand shall be against every man and every man shall be against him now this is the description of the Arab or the Ishmaelites. Verse 10, and Sarah went to Hagar and said, O my sister, I have sinned before the Lord my God. I saw thy son and knew God gave him, but I turned against my own soul and loved not thy treasure. Verse 11, Hagar said, pay close attention at this verse. Verse 11, Hagar said, saidest thy God that Abraham was father to my child? And Sarah said, nah. O Hagar. Hagar said, Neither said I thy husband was Ishmael's father. So here in Oaspi shows how Hagar states that Ishmael is not Abraham's father. Verse 12. So they were reconciled, and by right of the beginning of Abraham's nation, Ishmael was Abraham's son before God, but not in the flesh. So here Oaspi is clearing up the fact that Ishmael was the stepson and not a physical descendant of Abraham. That's why the blessings went from Isaac to Jacob. Well, here this verse clears up that Ishmael is not from Abraham's bloodline, but is a stepson. And with this clear, it would make sense why Isaac was chosen being Abraham's real son. And the Muslims, or Ishmaelites, or those who practice Islam, may not like this, but it is what it is. But it makes sense because all the prophets and lawgivers in the Bible was from the house of Israel and not Ishmael. And to further drive the nail in the hole about Ishmael not being from the loins of Abraham. In God's first book, in the first book of God, chapter 13, verse 19 through 21, it states, God, verse 19, God said, Behold, there is a time to clear up all things, present and past, where Abraham, father to Hagar's son, Ishmael, and had he been true to the law of sacrifice amongst the heathen, then Ishmael, being firstborn, would have been chosen for the burnt offering. So there you have it. This is why Ishmael was not called upon for the burnt offering, because he wasn't his son, but Isaac was. Verse 20, in which matter the Ezra Bible, the Tanakh, and the King James Bible leading up that you have today, is shown to be false before Yahweh, or Jehovah, in regard to Abraham, Ishmael, and Isaac, and the burnt offering also. Verse 21, which words were not my words, nor the words of my angels, but the words of the Egyptian records. So here again, it shows you how Ishmael is not the physical seed of Abraham. And it also mentions the Ezra Bible, which is the Tanakh of 450 BC. When the Hebrews returned from the Babylonian captivity, they recorded those false accusations against Abraham in them texts. Now, God command Isaac's wife to come from Syria. First book of God, chapter 13, verse 7 and 8, verse 7. And Abraham said, concerning our son Isaac's wife. 
And God said, Because of the blessings of Sarah, thy wife, who hath been upright all her days, I will give her comfort in her old age. Verse 8. Send thy servant to the land of thy fathers, and I will send my angel with thy servant. And he shall come to a maiden who shall be Isaac's wife. So Abraham called his servant, who was overseer over his goods. And he said to him, Equip thyself with camels and asses, and with servants, and with jewels, I will give thee. And go thou to Syria, the land of my fathers, and bring a damsel hither, who shall be Isaac's wife. So Abraham relates the land of Syria being the land of his forefathers. And this is the place where he will send Isaac to seek out a wife. Now, in the ancient time of Syria, there was a city called Ebla. And there is evidence of civilization going back as far as 25, 26, even as far as back 2000 BC in that area called Ebla. Now they have the Ebla tablets, which is the evidence. And on those tablets, they have deciphered names such as Ishmael and Israel. And places such as Hazar, Megiddo, Jerusalem, Lakesh, Dor, Giza, Ashtarot, just to name a few. And you could see on these pics the evidence of that region. And you can see the people, you can see civilization. They got tablets of governorship. They had a king's list. When you look up the Ebla tablets, you can see these things for yourself. I'll let you do that homework because I've been through these things in past vids. And I don't want to keep repeating things that I already addressed in other vids. You can just go check the vids or just go check the Ebla tablets and you would see proof of biblical names in them tablets. Now, here are the false accounts by the Arabians about Abraham decoded. First book of God, chapter 11, verse 23 through 31, it states, verse 23. Now, when Abraham and his people came to Arabia, especially into Egypt, the matter was entered in the records of the different kingdoms, especially reference to Abraham's professing to hear the voice of God. For he had not a flat head, and moreover, he had good judgment of his own, quite unlike the Egeans in the temples, or the Magi's. Verse 24. But because Abraham gave no counsel as to war or to earthly gain, he was not favored by any of the kings and was suffered to go his way unmolested. And this is why you probably don't find him in the records. He wasn't involved in government. He was more like a countryman living on the outskirts. So you don't have too many written accounts of a person living in the country on the outskirts. Verse 25. When Sodom and Gomorrah were destroyed, the king's people heaped the blame of it on Abraham's head. And there rose up enemies against Abraham in those regions. Verse 26. And they also accused him of attempting to burn his son Isaac as a sacrifice to his God after the manner of the heathen of old. So here you can see that account was not written by Abraham, but his enemies. Verse 27. And they accused Abraham of being the father of Ishmael by his servant maid and of driving Hagar and Ishmael away to Paran after he tired of her. Verse 28. And these accusations and many more of like wickedness were heard by the news gatherers, the scribes, and they wrote them down, not knowing of a truth what they were doing before God. And so their records were entered into the libraries of the kings of Arabia, especially of Egypt. So here you can see how the he say, she say was going on back then making false accusations. And these are the false accusations that Ezra, when he went up and started writing the Tanakh, used as reference for Abraham with all these false accusations which you have in your Bible now about Abraham being a murderer, wanting to sacrifice his son. Owasby clears up that all those were false accusations as you see in this verse. Verse 29, Abraham perceived these matters and he weeped before God saying, Alice, O God, would though I had a great learning and could write my records truthfully before men, God answered him saying, verse 30, thy faith being in Yahweh, in thousands of years, one Ezra shall send his scribes into these countries to gather news, even as do the kings of this day. And his scribes shall translate from these records with all their errors and falsehoods, and Ezra shall publish the matter as the history of the deliverance. Now, and the Ezra Bible is the Tanakh of 450 BC after the return of the Babylonian captivity. And as I have been telling many Hebrew Israelites that it is the Tanakh that incorporates all the false doctrines that you have today in your Bible. 
The creation story was not part of the Torah. Adam and Eve was not part of the Torah. The flood of Noah was not part of the Torah because those are stories. And the Torah is law. And the story is not law. So in 450 BC is when these creation stories, these false accusations against Abraham and confusion came in. Now, verse 31. Abraham, hearing this of God, bowed down his head and weeped, saying, Thy will be done. And God comforted him, saying, I am the light and the life. And with that, I'd like to say peace and blessings and catch you on the next documentary called Decoding the Hebrew Israelites. Shalom.